Hello and welcome. For those of you just joining us, my name is Jonathan Doe, and I like to collect artifacts and relics from infamous true crime cases. And this is my show, where I share with you pieces from that collection and the stories behind them. In today's episode, I have a drawing from Chicago Ripper Crew cult leader Robin Getch, a notorious satanic cult consisting of serial killers, cannibals, rapists, and necrophiles who killed 17 women and one man in and around the Chicago area. But to really understand the significance of this piece, we need to go back to the early 1980s. So let's do that. This is Murderbilia, show and tell. Not much information is available related to the Chicago Ripper crew prior to the killings. The cult consisted of four members, Robin Getch, Andrew Kokorilis, Thomas Kokorilis, and Edward Spritzer. It has been said that Robin Getch, the cult's leader, was once coincidentally employed by John Wayne Gacy's company PDM Contractors, though I was not able to find any real concrete evidence to validate this claim. What is true, however, is that on May 23rd of 1981, the cult abducted their first victim, 28-year-old Linda Sutton. Sutton's body was found in a field behind a motel in Villa Park, Illinois. Her body was badly mutilated and her left breast had been amputated, an act on their victims that would eventually become a signature for the group. It wouldn't be until nearly a year later that the group would strike again, with the abduction and murder of Lorraine Borowski. And from there, the group would begin to abduct and murder women on a nearly bi-weekly basis before suddenly pausing again. Gacht, who worked on and off as an electrician, also shared his home with two of his helpers, Edward Spritzer and Andrew Corcoralis. The news that the three men are suspected in up to 17 murders has sent a wave of fear through the homes where Gecht was invited to do odd jobs. Most neighbors refused to talk about Gecht on camera. They said they didn't want to get involved. Those who did talk say that the close-knit neighborhood may be slower to welcome newcomers the next time. Between 1981 and 1982, the group would ultimately end up killing 17 women and one man. The group would drive around the Chicago area in a red van, searching for victims, primarily sex workers. Once a victim had been abducted, they'd take them back to Robin Geck's home, which he would refer to as the Satanic Chapel. And once inside, the group would ritualistically rape and torture their victim while Getch read passages from the Satanic Bible. The women would then have their breasts amputated with a wire garrote, often while still alive. The men would then eat pieces of these breasts as a kind of sacrament before Getch would use it to masturbate with. When it was done, Getch would then place these breasts in a special box. Thomas Kokorilis, during interrogation, would claim that he once saw 15 breasts inside of this box. When the cult members finally decided that they were done with their victim, they would take their lives in a multitude of different ways, ranging from strangulation, stabbing, and shooting. The only victim of theirs that was not killed in this manner was their single male victim, who was killed by the group in a drive-by shooting. Everybody thinks I'm a, I'm a monster. Convicted killer, sex offender, Thomas Cocorales, linked to one of the most terrifying times in Chicago. They don't want to see me out there on the streets, period. As members of the notorious Ripper crew, Cocorales, his brother Andrew, Robin Gatt, and Edward Spritzer are believed to have murdered up to 20 women. Their hunting grounds, the city and suburbs in the early 80s. Were three children walking down by the riverside and they found the body. Driving a red van, they grabbed victims right off the roads, some in the middle of the day. Families were paralyzed with fear, hoping their loved ones wouldn't be next. They were attacked and mutilated. The details are horrifying. Torture and rape lasting for hours. They cut off the women's breasts to perform a satanic communion. 
As police found body after body across the Chicago area, they noticed those same distinct wounds. The crew's deadly grip on Chicago lasted two years before they were caught. The cult committed their last crime in the tail end of 1982 with the abduction of Beverly Washington. She was found on December 6th along some railroad tracks with her left breast amputated and her right breast severely slashed. Despite the severity of her injuries, she survived and was able to provide details on her attackers and the red van that she was abducted with. From this, the cult members were apprehended. Police say the investigation snowballed after Area 5 detectives stopped this red van registered to Robin Gecht. Police had been searching for the 1975 Dodge van after a woman claimed that she had been picked up by a man in the vehicle who raped and mutilated her. That led to the arrest of Gecht, Edward Spritzer, and Andy Kokorilis. Authorities say the three are suspects in more than a dozen Chicago area slains. They have been cooperating to a degree, and uh, at least one of them has made a written statement. One of the men that has been charged. That's correct. Are you liberty to identify who that is? I won't do that at now. This stage of the game, right? The arrest of the three men has touched off inquiries by area lawmen who are checking on possible links between the three and the unsolved murders of suburban women. The uh, the common thread that seems to be going through the uh, all the homicides that we're investigating is that the victims were uh, lone females at night and just uh, either abducted or brought into their car or van whatever vehicle they were using, and uh, they were attacked and mutilated, and the bodies were dumped. Getch was the only member of the group to maintain his innocence. Despite this, he would ultimately be convicted of the attempted murder, aggravated kidnapping, deviant sexual assault, and rape of Beverly Washington, and was sentenced to 120 years in prison. Thomas Kokorales would get life in prison. Edward Spritzer would be given the death penalty but this would later be commuted to 70 years. And Andrew Kokorilis would receive the death penalty and be executed by lethal injection on March 17th of 1999. He declined a last meal, and his final words were, to the Borowski family, I am truly sorry for your loss. I mean this sincerely. But that finally returns us to the significance of this piece here. This is a drawing of a bunny man smoking a cigarette drawn by Robin Getch on April 24th, 2000. And it says, to my friend Ken, my best wishes. A truly macabre statement coming from such an evil individual. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I hope that you found it interesting. Until next time, this is Murderbilia, show and tell.